Hey guys, Ron Bond, Bondleville Construction here. Today we're pouring an apron on a on a pole barn right behind me there. It's 12 by 30. Um, we got it all set today. We dug it out, put the forms in and everything, and uh, somehow I got concrete. It's been real hard to get concrete this year. They're so booked up, but kind of a last minute deal. Um, it's going to be like 2.30 when we pour this thing, so right in the direct sun. So we're going to try to get it in quick, get a broom finish on it, edge it, and... Uh, We'll be done. Stay with us. That's what we got, guys. Like I said, 12 by 30. It's got a three inch pitch in it. So this corner is pretty much flush with the ground around it. Then you go down here and we kept it level, so this kind of banks away over here. But the customer, that's what he wanted. He wanted a 12 foot approach to this pole barn. It'll be nice. We put um, some stone underneath it. He had a pile of stone here. So it's number two stone. We put a bunch of number two underneath it. It's going to be five and a half inches, 4,000 pound concrete with fiber. As you see, we got the wire mesh down. That's what we're up to. Here's the crew. Greg. We got Nick. Say hi, Nick. Nick's new. Evan, what do you think? What? <laughs> I, that's what I thought. Nothing. You don't think anything. Get the <laughs> we got the crew of few. <laughs> Gonna rock it out. Comes the concrete. Yep, All right. Get out, of your way get out of your way, we'll put you right in the concrete, I'm bud. Gonna, I'm going to turn that water around, okay? Yep. We'll put you right in the slab if you're not careful. Now don't forget, that's going to be hot. What's going to be hot? That water coming out of that hose. Ah, that's all right. So, that's all right. You're ready to the walls off, right? Yeah. <laughs> we'll wipe her down. <laughs> You'll have a little splatter. Yeah, I know. Listen, this will be a concrete job if you're going to the splatter. That's right. Hey guys, Bondo here. So the first thing we did with this uh, pouring this approach was wet down the stone. We just wanted to get that aggregate wet. This thing been sitting out in the sun, so we, I didn't want the aggregate to soak the water, you know, like a sponge right out of the concrete. We figured it would dry real quick as it was. You can kind of see the sun shining on half of it. It was starting to get shady out, but we poured this late in the afternoon, so it was pretty warm that day. So we're just pouring along. We, we decided just to screed this one off by hand. So Greg's standing outside the form, and I'm uh, that's me on the inside with the orange shirt on. And uh, I'm, I'm just screeding along on the inside and magging off the inside. This driver is pretty good. We've used him a lot of times. He's, he's just putting the concrete right in there where we want it. Saves a lot of work. It's nice when you can get the truck right up to these. These front loader trucks are nice for pouring these things. So I have a wet pad on the right that I'm working off, like I said, and Greg's working off the form. So that's how we do these. Just try to mag along the edge of the steel there to give yourself a wet pad. And the other guy, he don't have to stand in it. He just stands on the outside. He doesn't have to fill in his foot tracks. And these guys are fairly new, these puddlers, but they're doing a pretty good job here keeping the concrete down for me. And there we are. She poured off and now we're just going to mag the edges. That's me on the bow float. Just knocking down the, the high spots and closing up the stone. Pushing the aggregate down. So I ended up doing it in both directions. As you can see I went one direction with the bow float and I turned and went the other direction. And if you see there there's a pile of concrete on the ground. I always have the driver dump a little concrete before he starts washing up. And 
me and Greg are just filling the edges a little bit. Usually when you um, bow float these things, it'll kind of roll the edge a little bit. So I like to go through and fill the edge back in and uh, make sure it's nice and flat. And then we went along with a brass edger and we edged it and set the stone on it. And we uh, ended up grooving a couple of lines in it um, just for expansion joints. What we're doing right now is filling all these little rock holes on the edge. See them down through, see them down through there. All those little rocks. So what you do is take your mag float, tip it at a sharp angle like this, steal some cream like that, and put it right in there. And then just turn your float sideways. Steal some cream, fill the rock holes, turn it sideways. Like that, and then just mag over that spot that you just made. That bad spot that you made. We're going to close these edges up, get rid of all them little rocks. So that when we put our broom finish on, you don't see it, because that don't look good. How crappy that looks. So I want to get all that filled with cream. It's going to be hard down in there. I'm going to have to use my little um, one on the handle. Got a little mag on the handle. Cream. That's what we're doing right here. Fill it, put it in there. The concrete's still pretty wet right now. I just poured it, so. Way too long, it's harder to get the cream. See how much you can grab just with a quick swipe. When it's just soft, though, you gotta not push too hard because you're leaving a dent. You gotta reach it back up, close it back up. Sometimes you can tap the rocks down in, steal your fat like that. Fat in there. It's hard around these ribs of these, this corrugated metal. So guys, I'm here I'm brooming this thing, we're wet the broom, but before I broom this, we didn't video it, but I actually hit it with a Fresno trowel just to knock the bow float lines down because them lines are kind of deep. Either got to have to get on it with knee boards and knee board the whole thing or just hit the bow float lines out with a Fresno trowel. You know, that closes it up, but in my opinion, the broom opens the surface right back up again. So even though you're Fresno, they say it'll close the surface, but on a broom finish, I believe it opens it right back up, so I don't worry about it. Anyways, we just wet the broom, push it down, pull it back, get our nice texture in there. We waited. We didn't have to wait very long on this one. It was, like I said, it was hot, so it dried pretty fast, and we are able to get it done really quick, so it's a, it was a good day for us. Do me a favor, guys. If you like this video, smash the like button for me. That'll help me out on YouTube with the algorithms. And they'll rank my videos higher and I'll be able to, you know, reach out to more people. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because, uh, you know, we're posting a lot of videos and hopefully this, these videos will help you guys out. We do a lot of flat work and a lot of new Dura foundations and stuff. Um, home repairs in the winter. So, you know, stuff 
good helpful stuff. I'm trying to help people out, give back to the platform. I like this YouTube platform. I've been using it for years. Anyways, thanks guys. Enjoy the rest of the video. If you you should stay to the end of the video because the homeowner's hilarious and uh, he he's just a riot. At the end of the video, I bust his chops a little bit and and uh, it's just funny. Thanks. One more thing guys, here I'm putting a groove line in this for um, so it cracks where we want it. Instead of saw cutting it, I'm just grooving a line into it. But one thing that I didn't show you on the video, I just realized is we grooved this thing earlier while the concrete was still really wet. We actually snapped a dry line. You just take a string and snap a line on the concrete. And I use like a edge of a 2x4 or a um, edge of my screed board and I'll run that line to make sure it's straight and I'll set it. Uh, all you're doing early on is setting the stones so it gets the stones out of the way so it looks like I'm plowing this perfect groove in here but actually we'd done this earlier so this was the final touch. Just wanted to let you know that guys. Using the other one? No, I'm using this one. I think once you get out of that sun, it's going to be easy. Yeah, once you get out of the sun. Like the master to step in? Yeah, the master can step in on that one. Make them look bad. Make them on YouTube. Make them look. <laughs> you loosen it up for me, didn't you? You just waste the time and make people look bad, John. What? I mean, Greg. What? <laughs> Have the meat pads, you see any? Yeah. Yeah, down where you got some leverage.
if I need you to do the sunny spot and make it look bad on camera. <laughs> Are you up? He tried to show me up earlier with that fancy trick he's showing. You up? So easy a caveman can do it, Nick. <laughs> well, there she is, YouTube. Little uh, apron, 12 by 30. Put a little hand tool joint in it. Over here. Mm -hmm. It's got fiberglass in it. I don't know if you can see it. We put, we put a fiberglass in the concrete on this one, and wire mesh. He's got a big back, oh, the homeowner. What do you think, Frank? I, th I think it's a beautiful fucking thing, man. Nice. I love it. You love it? I, I love it. Awesome. Another happy customer. There's your big back, oh. We'll come out here eight feet and go that way. Oh, right here? Next year. All right. Right? Sounds good, my man. So that... I have all this concreted. We'll concrete your whole yard if you want. No. <laughs> the only thing is they're gonna move that maple tree. Uh, I gotta get we can do that. I buddy. gotta get that dug out. Because I wanna this fall, I wanna plant that over there. Okay. Sign off YouTube.